Welcome to the Tough Fish. I am so excited to introduce to you my friend and co-author, Dr. Wayne Applewhite. Wayne, I am so glad that you are here. Thank you. Thank you, Jen, for the invite. It's really a pleasure to be on your show. And golly, yes, all the fun we've had writing this book. Absolutely. But before we talk about that, I would love for you to talk about mind syncing. What is that? And talk to me about how that came about. Mind syncing is my website. So mind syncing, Wayne, what is it? Mindsinking.com. That's right. Um, it came about because you and I talked about, I need to get embraced with social media. <laughs> so I, I, I found someone to do a web design for me and mind syncing is that website. And what it does is it brings individuals to a space where we can have a conversation about leadership. So mind syncing, we're putting our minds together and I call it an intellectual incubator. So we can poke and prod and ask questions and give comments and do certain things um, from around the world. And we can talk about a, building a better leadership mousetrap, if you will. I love that. I wasn't exactly sure how the name came about, but that's really cool. But you mentioned leadership and I know that that's your background, but you have so many other pieces of experience in there, but how did you really get into leadership itself? Um, you know, I, I fell into leadership. Um, I, growing up, I, I've always looked at people who were in charge, charge of me. I always, want, I always wanted to be the line leader at school because, you know, hey, we got to lead the, the class. But really, um, with my background in the military, corporate world, academia, um, leadership is everywhere. It's boundless and it's endless. And I, I really got excited about it because just like you, I've seen good leaders, great leaders, terrible leaders. And I, I know I have said some things that you have said and probably your listening audience as well. I would never do that to someone or I would never do that. Or I need to remember to do that because that was a good thing. Um, so leadership, I just fell into it. And I, you know, when you're good at something, like I was never the best playing sports because I was too small and, and didn't weigh enough to play football, but I ran track, um, I swam, I played tennis, I did water polo. And when you get good at something, you start to have fun. I found leadership was fun because I wanted to learn more about it, know more about it, see more about it and do things. And it just, it just happened. I, that's all I can say. If you were to describe leadership in a few words, which I realize is kind of a tall order to ask, but I'm curious, what would you use? What are some key words that when you hear the word leadership, what immediately comes to mind? Well, you know, you and I wrote the book and, and again, thank you for joining me on that journey. Um, we have a working definition in our book. So I, I won't give that away, but I will certainly say that there are some key things about leadership that we need to, we, the, the general way uh, or the universal way, we need to keep in mind. Leadership is a verb. Lead is a verb. So you have to act. You've got to decide. You've got to make tough decisions. You've got to be responsible. You've got to be accountable. All those things um, leading up to, again, the title of our book, you know it's a verb, right? Um, that's what leadership is to me. It's such a cheeky title that we came up with. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to talk I, a little bit about that? Because part of creating a book, part of that process for the author is figuring out what are you going to title this thing? How do you come up with a title that you feel good about and you want to then start talking about? So you want to talk a bit about how that title came to be? Sure. And you can chime in because, you know, I may not know all, I don't, I may not remember all the nuances that we went through, but we first had a different title. This is obviously not the first title that we came up with. And that title, we said, oh, we were excited about that one. And we put our query letters together. We put our proposal together and we sent it out to scout, to, to um, author agents, uh, to literary agents. We sent it to publishers looking for that. All right, who's going to publish our book? Who's going to manage us and be our, 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 our talent scout for us? And it kept falling on ooh, rejection letter, rejection letter, rejection letter. And we were like, okay, we're, we're, we're missing something here. Let's go back and look at the proposal. Let's look at the query. Uh, what can we do? 
And we said, well, you know what? Maybe it's the title too. So we changed the title to something else, not to where we are today yet. And got a couple of hits on that. And I remember one um, literary agent, and I won't mention names, but one literary agent did contact us and he said, hey, um, can you give me more? I'm, I'm kind of, you, you've piqued my interest with your proposal. And so we did, and he kind of said, oh, you know what, I, I'm going to kick myself maybe, but I'm going to pass on this. Um, and then we said, okay, the, changing the title got some hits. Let's retweet the title again, because we worked that query letter how many times? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> a ton. We tweaked that proposal until I see proposal and query in my, it was nightmares almost in my dreams. Ah! <laughs> Change the query. <laughs> so we get, to the, we get to the title and you and I were talking and all of a sudden we came up with that title. You said it was kind of cheeky and I said, yeah, it was kind of fun. Yeah. And, so we, and so we sent that out and we got a lot of hits almost immediately. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember one literary agent said she loved the title, but she was going to pass on the book because we weren't point, pointing fingers at a particular individual, a particular organization, a particular administration. And we said, no, this book is timeless, so we're not going to do that um, because 10 years from now, when someone picks up the book, they're going to get the same good information, um, so it's not perishable. And... The title, it, it landed and it hit, and we started getting a lot more excitement about that from the periphery. And we got a publisher, and here we are today. Um, <laughs> book's coming out in February. I yes. Can't, I can't wait. <laughs> if you can add to that, please add to that, because I might have missed something. Uh, no, no. But actually, there are two things that were coming through my mind. And the first is, to your point, we experienced a lot of query letters. I know that there were a few, I mean, query letters, but query rejections, proposal rejections. And I know that there were so many times, I feel like I would sing to you the queen song, another one bites the dust when we would email back and forth just as a, hey, okay, we get it. But would you share uh, your perspective about how to bounce back when you do get those rejections and you you know to expect some and you know that it's it, it might happen it will happen but after a while it might start to get to you and i'm curious if you have some some advice or some encouragement for someone who might be going through that now and how to bounce back and keep going okay sure and first let me qualify your question because we started writing the book in 2016 <laughs> Yeah. This is now 2021. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we started writing that book five years ago. Yeah. And um, I think the book, I, and help me here, I think the book was almost finished within the first two years. First we finished in about two years, yes. Two years, yes. So for all of you listening, that means that it was three years, well, really, to be truthful, two years of rejection letter, rejection letter, oh, we're interested, no, rejection letter, Reje oh, we're interested, no, rejection. And I remember you and I continue to say in our emails and Zoom meetings and, and Skype meetings, um, okay, we're one more notch closer to yes, because we continue to, to say, okay, these, these four said no, there's 25 more that we're going to query right now. And so we're closer to yes. And that was our, I think that was our mantra. That was our marching orders. Um, we're getting closer to yes, getting closer to yes. And we're still not a yes because it's not published until the 16th of next month, but we are so close to yes. <laughs> but it, it was just, you have to realize that, I think they said Dr. Seuss was turned down a hundred times, um, you know, and then he hit it, but uh, it's just persistence. We, we know it's a good product. At least we think it's a good product. Um, we believe it is. And we were, we were passionate about it. We are passionate about it. And it's good information. And we wanted to get it out there. So I don't care how many people told us no, we were going to get this book published. It, it's just a matter of when someone said yes. And to that point, you're also alluding to staying true to that vision. Because 
you know, the, like you said, that there was the comment about, hey, this isn't, you know, salacious enough. And we said, but that's not the intention behind this book. And sometimes, you know, the author might be running into a challenge where, well, when is it that I should do what the guidance is or make an adjustment? And when should I stay the course and say, mm, I might need to make some changes, but that's not the one I need to make here. Do you have some thoughts there? Uh, okay, we had beta readers as well. And our beta readers, God love them. Oh my goodness, they came back with great, they came back with great insights they came back with great challenges, and, and a couple of them came back and said, no, no, you got it wrong. You need to re redo this one um, because the rest of the book says this, and you're going to use this one? No, 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 no. You, you got to do something differently. Um, but it's just knowing the product is good between the authors, okay, there's a huge bias there getting beta readers to read it and asking them to look at it really from their perspective. And we don't want to hear, yes, this is great. We want to hear, okay, this is good, but I'm confused over here and I'm confused over here, um, or this is not good. Um, so having that and having them make comments that we didn't even ask them to make, which spoke to the goodness of the book, we knew we were on to something. We didn't know what, but we knew we were onto something. And so we took that and with all of, even though we got a lot of queries, rejections, even though we got a, a lot of proposal rejections, some of those publishers and some of those literary agents did take the time and didn't send us the obligatory form letter. Some of them actually sent us a personal note and email and said, you know, hey, you guys are on the right track. It's just not a good fit for my organization or me, um, you know, but good luck and go get it. And so that helped tremendously. Absolutely. If we got 100% form letters, rejection letters, I think we might have had a little bit more struggle. But because we were getting rejections, but they were personal, personalized to us in our, in our manuscripts, um, we were excited about that. Absolutely, because it, it also felt like it gave you more information to go on yes. and, to, and to help make a better decision versus uh, just continuing to try to go with a limited amount of information that you had to start with. It gave you just a little bit more, a few more breadcrumbs to add to the, to the pile and go, now what do I do with this? But yes. I mean, I appreciated the, the times that we were told no, because as I've talked about in other cases that I, I looked at a closed door as saying, okay, this is redirection to realign to where we're supposed to go. And now there were times that it affected me just a little bit more like, oh, really, this sucks, <laughs> but it is what it is. And you're human and you spent so much time working on something that you feel passionate about and you believe in, and you believe that you're you're writing this because you know that it's something that you feel that you need to share and you want to share. So there is that balance of learning to detach and to, to have that slightly thicker skin to go, I get it, it's okay. But still, it's it's the rejection, if you will, if you choose to look at it as redirection and be thankful and offer a gratitude of just saying, thank you for getting back with me. Thank you for letting me know. Then you're still getting, you still have some goodness coming and it will happen at some point for you. Yes, and, and if I could add to that just one more time, one more thing. Um, as we got those rejections, as we got that feedback, as we got positive and negative feedback, um, we we're always taught in English class, your thesis sentence, your thesis statement is the most important thing. Well, we were beyond the thesis sentence and statement. We were looking at a word, one word. Well, let's, well, okay, the feedback is this. So let's tweak this one word that could change possibly that whole concept that they're looking at, and maybe that would benefit us. Um, so, you know, the feedback wasn't, we weren't looking at taking chunks out of the book or adding chunks to the book. We were infinitesimally small, one word, um, which made that more fun. <laughs> and, and again, you know, over, I think over the four years, we still tweaked the book until, or the manuscript until um, we landed on our publisher that we have now. And I think we even tweaked it 
after we had sent them the first draft of the manuscript <laughs> because okay well let's change this a little bit and see if they'll accept that so it, yeah it's it, it came down to one or two words and throughout and sprinkled throughout the manuscript and that was again it was rewarding it was fun and it was a learning experience because you learn from all aspects and there are consequences to everything and the consequences here were if you if we can't get the thought process that we want across in this then the book's not going to sell or the book's not going to be published or the book is not going to be whatever it's going to be so we tweak those things put it back out and people say, oh we love this yay you know fruits of our labor really paid up <laughs> that's no but that's a good point now this was my first time uh, co-authoring something. So I am curious from your side, what was that like working with a co-author? Oh, it, I think it was necessary. First of all, let me say it was fun. And again, <laughs> and I know people watching this are going to say, oh, they say this too much. Thank <laughs> you for joining me on the journey. Thank you for saying yes to that. Um, but, Thank in you. Leader, but in leadership, Leadership is not a one individual direct vision. That leadership, it, it's, it's, it is populated with positivity, if that's even a word, from a diverse group of naysayers, yaysayers, and maybe sayers. And not heard that one before, maybe sayers. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> and, and Having a co-author was great. Having you as a co-author was really great because we got to check and balance each other's concepts and thoughts. And if, I'm not sure if you're going to get into this, but um, we started out writing the chapters together. And then we decided, oh, okay, well, wait a minute. Writing the chapters together, we're, we're kind of doing this and we're burning the candles from both the end and we get to the middle and oop, why don't we you write chapter seven, I'll write chapter nine, and then we'll switch them. And you look at my nine and I'll look at your seven and I go, Jen, I don't understand this. Or Jen, this concept doesn't make sense to me. Or, oh, we could add this. And you did the same to mine. And you know what? It's like putting sprinkles on a cupcake. It just was the finishing touches that we needed. It really was. Hey, I agree. I, I found that what we did when we came up with that rhythm, I felt like that was a fun way to tackle a project that we were still conceptualizing in a lot of ways. We knew the big picture. We knew the transformation that we wanted for our reader. But in the same breath, when you are looking at a blank sheet of paper and you're looking at your concept that you want to write about, it's like, well, we both have different vantage points to come into this. What's How do we want to do this so that we're honoring each other honoring that concept, honoring our reader. So we were thinking of all those parts as we were working on them. And there were some books that, some chapters rather, that it was primarily your voice and your story, or there were some that were my story. And there were plenty in there that were so much overlap that we were weaving in and out that I felt like it still sounded like one voice until you heard specifically one of us telling you it's our specific story happening. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. yeah, agreed. Particularly with the with the Wayne remembers and the Jen and the Jen remembers. Um, <laughs> because because as as you well know, do you know this? <laughs> our our book is sprinkled with stories and remembrances that you and I remember, either of things that happened to us ourselves or things that we witnessed through other people, but we were direct, it wasn't hearsay. We, we were directly involved in that process of seeing, observing, listening, and learning from that individual. And those are in the book. And they are, they, they add, they bring the book to life, I think. Um, Talk about that a little bit more, because a, a lot of times when you hear that it's a, a business book or a leadership book, it, it can almost start to feel, especially if it's labeled business book, it, it can almost feel <laughs> like, okay, this is going to be high concept or it's going to be dry or and it not intending to because those authors wanted to spend put a lot of love into it and I enjoy reading books like that I mean I think <laughs> because I'm always I'm 
I'm always learning. And I see that as an opportunity to learn, to hone my skills, to, to further develop as, you know, to like a personal development space. So I definitely enjoy those kind of things, but I like the approach that we took, which did include what felt more, more storytelling, more, not grassroots exactly, but more storytelling, really. The, the, the idea of using stories to help to create connection versus just here's this concept and here's how it's, you can be taught this, but we made it more relatable. And I'm curious as to, because you were the one who suggested that we really include those. And I'm curious why you, you thought that was important to do. I mean, I'm glad, but I'm curious. <laughs> I thought then, I think now, and I will always think this, unless somebody can change my mind, change my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm open. Um, but having those stories in there tells the reader that the authors made mistakes too, that the authors learned throughout their <clears throat> leadership experiences that they had or followership experiences that we had, that we were learning, we were practicing, we were, ooh, picking and choosing, almost like a um, going through a, a line at the, at the restaurant. I'll take a little bit of this. I'll take a little bit. Ooh, no, keep those, keep those brown things away from me, those green things away from me. No, no, no. Um, but we got to pick and choose. And I think this tells the reader that the authors are human, that they're not perfect, that they've made some of the same mistakes I'm making now. And yet they're also giving us some insight as to how to learn from those mistakes from other people's experiences, or if we have to learn from those mistakes ourselves, what we as the authors did and know can help them and push them on that outside of the end of that conveyor belt to success. I like that. I think that's really, I like how you just explained that. I, I saw it as an opportunity to basically be a mentor in a private space for that reader, that that reader can take the book and whenever they need that pick me up or that encouragement or the, hey, I need a little bit more. I need to, do I need to do a little bit more here? What might be a, a way I could do that? And it's kind of like, it's their own personal thing, but it's, I saw myself as being able to be a mentor and to say, let me just share with you. I, I want you to be successful. So I want, I hope this helps you to be able to do that and have fulfilling, meaningful work and to be excited and to be encouraging about your own people, you and the people that you touch, however you are informal or formal. So I, I love that we did that. And, and the way we, the way we captured the chapters individually and then exchanged them, we also got to mentor each other. I learned, I learned a lot from you. You say you learned a lot from me. Oh, I did. <laughs> but, but we're still learning. And that was, that's the beauty of this book. And I like, I like that you said mentor, because I really believe that this book can mentor anyone who reads it. I don't care if they're the first time supervisor level leadership to the CEO of a billion dollar industry. There's concepts and practices and thoughts in this book that maybe they've forgotten or maybe they have pushed aside because it worked a long time ago, but I'm so far removed that I don't have to do that again. And they may say, you know what? I have a, a VP who's struggling. He or she might need this little tidbit. So let me throw that to them. So I, I see our book as a mentor to everyone. And because it's not a textbook, and because it doesn't have all those buzzwords, I taught leadership for, what, 14, 15 years for Boston University and a few other colleges. I've read so many books on leadership and business, and to see the buzzwords there time and again was just almost, oh my goodness, if I pick up another new book on leadership and see these words, I'm just going to puke. Um, <laughs> but, but, but we made it simple concepts. Um, easy things to listen to, look at, observe. And we ask a lot of questions in that book. We ask a lot of questions of the reader. So I'm excited. I am. Yeah, me too. Me too. 
So now going back to co-authoring and thinking of all the topics that you're, we've covered, and I think I have a cat hairballing. I hope people don't hear that. But if so, that's what's happening. There you go. And um, <laughs> that's what happens when you record live and you have a kitty in the room. Yeah, it's, just like leadership. it's just like leadership. Stuff happens and exactly. you can't control over it. So, okay, we'll figure out what it was, what caused it. We'll fix it and go on. <laughs> I'm so glad my kitty could provide us a real life in <laughs> example right then. <laughs> Was about either that or your kitty just saw some of those words I was talking about. <laughs> oh gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> so, a question that I have for you though is um, one of the things that we did to initially put this get this going was brainstorm out all the different topics we thought we might write about uh, that would that might go into this book, but culling through that to come to the exact ones or the ones that you actually want to have in there what was your thought process to help narrow down to come through the specific you know concepts and topics that we talked about well if you remember you and i the first time we really sat down to map our book um <clears throat> we used a whiteboard and we used stickies, a little bit, we used sticky notes. <laughs> and on those stickies, we would write one word or one concept, or I think it was no more than three words, I, I think we said. And we just started writing those words, J -j 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 -j. stick them up on the wall, stick them up on the whiteboard, stick them up on the wall. And once we thought we exhausted that process, we did it again, we did some more. Ah and we stick them up. And then finally we put them all up on the board. And I think I asked you to go through and match them. See which ones were duplications, see which ones were replicas or mirror image of something else, see which ones fit in a group, see which ones didn't fit and kind of put them all together. So you did that. And then I came behind you and I was, my chore was to look at them, group them, regroup them. Um, and, and we did that. And then both of us came and looked at the board, looked at the wall with all these stickies. And we said, yep, we like this. And if you would say, Wayne, I'm having trouble with this one. Tell me how this one fits here. And if I would explain it and you go, nope, then we throw that out and it would go to an outlier. And, and I would do the same with yours. And we, we finally got it down to, I think, um, I'm, I'm not sure how many groups, but, but the, the, the whiteboard that we use looked like an octopus with arms going out everywhere because of all the, all the stickies hanging over here and there. So we grouped yeah. those together. And then we, then we sat down and said, okay, what are we writing? You know, we, we, used, our, we used our SIP cube model. Um, and, and, and we kind of suggest, went through a little, little model of that and suggested which topics were going to be those topics that we really wanted to write about in this book. And we said, okay, we picked a few of those. We put it down on paper, and as we started writing the book, some of those went away because we realized, well, this doesn't fit. And it was a great starting point. Um, it, it, I don't know, you've written many, many papers, research papers. I've written many, many research papers. And the trick in research papers is it's easier to cut than it is to add because if you add, it looks like you're trying to force something to fit. But if you have to cut something out, it's like, oh, no, not that one. That's my best one. <laughs> and you throw that away. And, and I think you did that to me once, but that's okay. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> but it, it, really gave us, it really gave us a good start. And because of that good start, we have a very, very good product. Again, that's biased for me, but our beta readers said this was really good. They said we didn't miss anything. Um, and other people, even, even our editor, um, she suggested that this was really good. And we didn't ask her to give us comments like that, but she did. And throughout her editing, she would make notes and go, oh, this is a really good point. Oh, I have some leaders who, who need to see this right now. Um, so we, we think we captured that. But again, we kept hearing all these no, 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 no from our rejections. And we're like, oh, 
Okay, people like it, but the people who are really going to market it and put it in front of the public are saying, "No, what are we missing?" Um, so it was, it was, it was a fun. It is a fun journey. It is a taxing journey, um, and getting to to your point, getting to the right chapter titles and content was deliberate, and we didn't have to make things up and say, oh, well, we need something on this, so let's do, no, it was already there. And we we chose to throw a lot of them out because we figured that would make the book too long or that would miss the point or that's a different level that we're talking about right now for this particular book. Uh, so it was good. That's, I love how you just talked about that. So where can people find this book? They can find this book right now. It's on Amazon and it's on Barnes and Noble. It's um, Barnes and Noble. You can buy it. You can pre-order pre the Nook portion of the ebook. On Amazon, you can buy the or pre-order the Kindle version. And then on the 16th, the paperback comes out. And on the 16th, it should then be, as we understand it from our publisher, it should be going to many places where books are sold, but especially Amazon and Barnes and Noble. We think Target, we think Walmart, um, but don't know that exactly just yet. However, Barnes and Noble is a place and Amazon is a place to go. Thank you so much. Now, how can our listeners get to know you a little bit more? Where can they find you in social and tell us your website again? Okay, my website again is mindsinking.com. And that's M-I-N-D-S-Y-N-C-I-N-G.com. Um, and please come and, and join, the, join the discussion. Now, when you get to the website, um, you're gonna see the website, you're gonna see all kinds of stuff, you're gonna see my picture, uh, but it's, it's okay. But it will also point you to the direction of my secret Facebook group, where we are having a blog discussion um, and we, we're talking about leadership and that's that intellectual leadership, the intellectual incubator I was talking about where you can come and push and poke and prod and take and offer and just have a, a good read if you want, or you can obviously join in on the discussion as well. Awesome. Thank you so, so much, Wayne, for being here. I am so happy to have had you on the show. Thank you for making the time and for being on this journey and asking me to be your co-author. It was such a joy and we're still on the journey. Are we done? Oh my no, goodness, no. this went by so fast. No, thank we're not you. done. <laughs> but thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. <laughs>